The technology has changed a lot, isn't it? From the early 1970s, 1980s, when we were using film cameras, I had a Canon AE-1 and it was pretty straightforward, simple camera. And uh, the brilliant part of it for the technology those days was that it could set your aperture, right? All you do is decide what your shutter speed was. And that was a brilliant innovation because a lot of us saved money getting our exposure right. Uh, before that, we used to have handheld meters, uh, photo meters, light meters to decide what is the exposure uh, uh, that we need to set the camera to. Nowadays, with the modern uh, digital cameras, mirrorless cameras, you, you, there's nothing for you to do. You just set it on auto and you'll do everything. With the Canon A1, you have no, if you look at the back, there is no screen. Uh, there is uh, only a viewfinder and you have to manually focus and you have to set the shutter speed you want it. If you want a blurred image, then you put longer shutter uh, period. Uh, if you wanted a sharp, crisp, image without any blurs or movement then you look at uh, very high shutter speeds 125th of 125th of a second 1500th of a second 1000th of a second so that you have crisp clear pictures but you must have sufficient light or your aperture must be big enough to handle that kind of speed with the modern uh, uh, cameras even the handphones have cameras and they are totally automatic. You don't have to understand anything about taking pictures or photography or videos. You just press record, it will start recording. The modern cameras, the, good, the reasonably good ones like this one, uh, the Sony Alpha 5100, it's 24, about 24 megapixels. It's good, uh, especially if you want to print your photos and you want a bigger uh, prints, A3 size or A2 size or even banners, then you have to look at 45 megapixels and 100 megapixels to get you uh, details in the photos, in, in the prints. I was one of the older generation that learned how to manually focus the camera and there are a lot of advantages of being able to do that. Uh, for example, uh, one example I can think of is, I made a mistake when I first bought this uh, Alpha Sony 5100 because my old camera had a spot metering. That means the center will have a prism that uh, will have an image that will split, right? And uh, I could uh, focus using that when, when the, the top and the bottom of the image line up, then it's in focus. And with this camera, with the Sony camera, they had a few uh, focusing modes. One is uh, wide angle, that means it can take almost the whole uh, image and try to focus based on what's in the image, or it can have a, a zone where you just look at a small area of the image and try to focus on what's there or you can have a spot, center spot to focus uh, your image on. So for example, if the center spot was right there, it will always use that area to focus on. So if I moved away, it will fo focus at the back. If I move back, it will come back and focus on me. And I found out uh, after making many videos where my image is blurred because I was moving around a little bit and the spot was at the back or at the front of me, right? I decided, hey, um, since I didn't understand what was going on, let me go to manual focusing. The advantage of manual focusing is that you can uh, have a built-in depth of field, right? Because you know where you're focusing. 
how much has to be in front of you must be in focus and how much behind you has been focused and if your aperture is a bit wider the back can be completely out of focus blurred out which makes the image more appealing and makes you look more 3d in the video and uh, that is one of the reasons why uh, it is good to learn how to do manual focusing even if you're doing uh, time lapse uh, not time lapse even if you're even if you're doing slow motion right let's say you are trying to capture a drop of water falling down okay that's a simple example you can't focus the autofocus won't work because the water hasn't dropped once the water drops when the do water is in front of the camera lens it can adjust uh, and detect the drop and focus for it but most of the time the drop falls too fast so it never catches the drop it will be focusing on what is behind the drop right so your images will be out of focus if you have manual focusing you can focus right there where there is nothing and then when the water drops on it will fo be focused correctly uh, even like if you are walking around the corner right or your friend is walking around the corner and he is not come into the uh, into the picture right so if you are using autofocus you may focus on a distant hills rather than 5 10 feet away when you uh, where the corner is so when your friend comes around the corner he will look a blur right so uh, for a while and then the camera will auto focus on him but if you had manual focus to the corner the distance of the corner then when he comes around the corner he will be very clear so that is the this advantages of being able to know how to do manual focus then also i found out that uh, uh, there may be some bugs in the camera sony uh, software i noticed that a few times that if there was a bright light at the back uh, it sometimes it will flick uh, it will try to focus on the bright light maybe it's this uh, sony 5100 that has this uh, problem or maybe under certain conditions the problem occurs so it looks like it's best if you fail focusing knew how to set the aperture and the shutter speed and do it manually practice right uh, when you set your aperture and shutter speed manually you can focus for you sorry when you shut when you set your aperture and shutter speed manually the camera will always give the same exposure whatever happens in the image so ideally if you shine a torch on your face it will look very bright if you take off the torch it will come back to a darker image but i noticed that uh, if you use auto exposure and you shine the light on your face uh, they there is some reversed exposure issue going on because the background also becomes brighter instead of dimming the the image in in front of the camera that is being lit up and uh, when you do manual uh, exposure it's not that severe but it looks like the camera does do some overriding and uh, actually brightens the image instead of dimming it a little so that is one of the reasons why you need to check and see how your uh, camera works and use it in all kinds of conditions and frequently and get used to it and learn all the little, little things that will improve your photography technique did you notice that as my face comes closer to the light and becomes brighter the background also becomes brighter 
which is uh, reverse exposure, isn't it? And uh, this is uh, using auto exposure. That means the camera is controlling the exposure and the ISO rating. Here I've set it to manual uh, aperture and shutter speed and uh, you can see that the brightness is not that bad it doesn't increase too much but it is still increasing even even though the background should be darker right so the camera is compensating for whatever setting i've used The Sony cameras are really good. Uh, even this uh, budget uh, APS-C Alpha 5100 camera is pretty good. If you look, I've switched off all the lights in my room and it's just taking the ambient light outside. It's already late in the evening and uh, my computer is on, right? So the lighting is coming from my computer screen and you can see there's not much noise on the image it shows it's in that corner so i have to bring it up you can also touch the screen to show where you want to focus you don't have to move the little box around it can be a bit more tedious to do that okay so now i am focused So I have moved the center focusing point to the center. Now I can manually adjust. Okay. Over. If I picking, I put picking color on. I and change it to. Red. Now you can see the red is showing where the red is showing where it's focused on. If I move away, the red is out of focus, no more red. If I move too close, there's no more red so I know the red is actually moved down there okay so it shows which part of my photographs in focus right see now it shows very clearly which parts are in red see and I can zoom in Take the picture. I know the photograph will be sharp. For manual exposure settings, we just set the camera to manual and this thing. See? which can you see is changing my shutter speed okay i press the bot button again and it'll change my aperture right. and i can take the picture we'll see how it is it is too it will, should be too dark and then it can show me zebra. Normally I have the zebra off. It will show you how overexposed your pictures are. I think most people use 90%. See? Can you see? 
Can you see the striations coming up there? See, it shows You can touch and pinpoint where you want to focus to and it shows you that my picture is over overexposed. Touch. Am I focused? Now I'm focused. I can zoom in. So there is some slight Here you can see overexposed, overexposed, those two parts are overexposed. So zebra can be useful, at the same time it can be very distracting, especially when you want to look for something in your image. But uh, it, uh, it helps, a, it can help a lot. Mirrorless cameras have come a long way, huh? they are computer controlled and they've got a lot of features. Everything can be made auto. They have auto focusing, eye detection, automatically setting your exposure by controlling the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. So everything is done for you. And all you have to do is point and shoot, right? So if you are the type of photographer who is not interested in the technicalities of doing videos and photographs they are wonderful but if you really want to make that wonderful one in a million shot right then it's worth looking at manual focusing techniques uh, setting your aperture and shutter speeds your lighting especially if you're indoors whether you have uh, sufficient lights even on a bright day it, it can be uh, insufficient right so I have a few lights right now um, here in, in my in my room it is worth having a lot of patience and practicing and practicing and practicing until you get that one in a million shot which comes by knowing your camera inside out Watch the video, subscribe to my channel and check out the links below.